Hello. Hello there. Welcome. Welcome to Patricia Hammond and Matt Redman Living, Living Room, Room requests. requests. I like that. It's a bit like it's becoming a it's game It's like, show. oh no. <laughs> right. Well, we've got, as, as usual, a varied and lovely programme. Absolutely. Uh, how can they know it's time for them to go? Uh, we have My Ain Folk, which is from 1904. It's not a Scottish folk song, people think it is. It's written by Laura Lemon, who was Canadian. She's from Ontario, and I mention her in my book, which is out. I've got a copy right here. Look, I can show it's it It's called She Wrote Anthony. the Songs. She wrote the songs. Look how golden it is. It's so gorgeous. Um, got photos in there as about, well. Yes, photos. It's all it's all about women who wrote parlor songs and the popular songs and ballads from 1830s to 1950s. Absolutely. Yeah. And speak, anyway. speaking of the latter and mid part of the 20th century, we've got some songs coming up from then as well. Yes. So we're going to run this one into another, which we'll tell you about we'll after. We'll tell you about it after. This one's for Charles. Thanks very much. Thank you, Charles. Still 
Oh, you see, it must be something to be singing while, well, first of all, navigating the intricacies the of an 18-string bass contra string guitar. contra guitar. And um, uh, also hunching over and not being able to play, breathe properly. I was trying to play a nice uh, dramatic uh, 1920s orchestral engine while trying to sing. Never mind. Anyway, that was fun. Now, that was interesting. two contrasting requests on the same instrument. Yes, very. That was his idea, of course. Um, the idea was, yeah, so 1904 to 19, when was that? Third? 28. 28. 28. Um, so he was going to have me do that much lower. Oh, I can't give you anything but, but you've love. But you've heard that, that key million but, times. But it just, when we did it in the original key that it was actually written in, it sounded so 20s, you know, pre-microphone. Mm -hmm. It's got an edge to it. It's got a peppiness to it. That's even what though... the 20s actually sounded like. Not yeah. whatever people think it yeah. was this day. You know, because... In 1928, could you go to a venue and, and there's there's a microphone? Good heavens. If, even if there was one, I've talked to real old timers in their 90s and they told me they were horrendous, hellish. They made you sound much worse. So now, um, talking of horrendous and hellish, I'm going to play two <laughs> ukuleles simultaneously, which is, I can't be the like first... It's ventriloquism act or something. I can't be the first person in the history of the world to do that. But I'm anyway, sure. there we go. And uh, just a little idea I One had. One man, two ukuleles. That we go to 1967, is it? 67. So, yeah. And... Uh, this is for Suzanne. Suzanne, thank you. What a varied lot of requests Suzanne's asked for. We try and wonder if anyone knows where the time has gone. <laughs> yes, this is Who Knows Where the Time Goes by Sandy Denny, both words and music. Very poignant song because who knows where the time goes and she died at the age of 31. 31. She's buried in Putney Vale Cemetery. Across the morning sky All the birds are leaving
There we are. How many times has Matt brought lots and lots of instruments to a gig and people go, can you play more than one at once? <laughs> How many times? There and he goes go. like, well, yes. And that, for anybody interested, was one of the uh, old uh, tunings the... on the slide or, or, or steel Ooh, yes. guitar. Tell the boys and girls. Embryonic tuning for the old um, uh, lap steel tuning, really. It's it's called uh, the E7 tuning. Although that was the E flat 7 tuning because we were playing it down. But anyway, <laughs> that's a lot of information. But anybody who can music. play slide guitar would recognise that. Now, so that was for Suzanne. Thank you, Suzanne. We're back to another of Rog's request now. Yes, two Rogs in this concert. And the this one is, well, did he? He asked for the other Mozart, or the other two That's Mozarts correct, yeah. we've done. This is the third Mozart, Mozart that Rog has requested. Mm. They're all for soprano. I mean, Rog has great faith. Um, <laughs> fine, I'll be fine. Just, just breathe. Actually, no, 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 no. Non so pew is is actually core mezzo repertoire, and I am a core mezzo, as you can tell, to the very core. To my look at this belt. It's oh, I was going to change this tie to the green one. I oh, we just, speaking of changing, maybe you should change the. Okay. The, <laughs> yeah. You just give a brief rundown. I'll just give a brief rundown. This is from nineteen twenties. This, this, this thing. It's, it's, I it's a, meant the most I know part. you did. I'm just being okay. funny because I'm funny. That's why. It is actually genuinely a 20s um, cool. cotton uh, whatnot. Thing. And for anybody listening on the podcast, Patricia's now going to tell you about the aria mm. Betty, oh, yes, Betty, Ober and Masetto For those on the Giovanni. podcast, I'm wearing an orange cotton, very light cotton um, 1920s, um, uh, 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 what do you call that? Dressing gown. Yeah. Dressing gown. With Orientalism. Batti Batti Obel Mazzetto, sung by Zerlina, who is a, um, somebody told me that it was quite revolutionary for Mozart to get a sort of lowly serving girl to sing um, such an amazing showstopper. She basically, Don Giovanni, you know, he goes to bed with, with all and sundry. He's just, that's what he does. He does. He seduces, he takes them to bed and various different operatic productions make uh, various uh meals of this particular What's the song fact. about? Um, he thinks I shouldn't drone on. Um, anyway, um, so yes, so she's she's gone a bit, she's been seduced by him, she's about to be married to Mazzetto. And Mazzetto's got wind of it, of course, you know, this is not what you want to hear on your wedding mm -hmm. eve. And so she basically, she not, she expertly handles it. She goes and she says, she doesn't say I didn't do it. She doesn't say that. She says, hit me, hit me, beat me. Hit my, pull my hair, you know, do all the things like, like gouge my eyes out. Um, and I will only bless and kiss your hand as you do it because I, I love everything you do. Come on, hit me. Bhakti means hit me. Um, and then, um, and then she says, Ah, lo vedo, non hai cori. I can see you don't have the heart to do so. So let's be happier that, forever after. And that's, that's, that's way to do it. And that's it. how the music sort that's of dies away at the end. You'll and hear that's that. And that's going to play it on I'm something gonna play completely on the inappropriate. People who know the opera uh, score may remember that this number has a cello um, obbligato. I'm not going to play that exactly, but I'm going to play a version of that for this episode's performance. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening. And thanks for the request. To all the things. Do subscribe and like the video if you do enjoy it. Here we go. Yep. I'll follow what's you. The, what's the key? Yeah? Thank you very much. I don't have perfect pitch like he does. Batti, batti, oh bel masetto, la tua povera Zerlina, storo qui con mia angelina, le tue botte ad
time that's ever been done on a mando cello i would bet you anything it's possible but that's why you tune in to living room request that's right patricia hammond unexpected and matt redman so we'll see you on the next one you don't know what's in store no. maybe we do so unless you, you paid for a request out. in, in which case part. then you do you know it's coming up see you later thank you thank you <laughs>